everybody, Tiffany here. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, um, you know, please subscribe. We have a lot of these videos. Uh, today is kind of a special video because it is Sunday. Um, what I do on Sundays is I go to church. And my dad has this really cool art building. And so I come here and I just do kind of like a special um, edition on Sundays. Because I'm a recovering alcoholic. I will be sober eight years in May. And, you know, it is a spiritual program, but in AA, they don't let me talk about Jesus and the Bible as much, even though I do study it. And I use a lot of its teachings to help me in my recovery, but not everybody's like that in AA. You know, we have all kinds of people. You know, we have atheists, agnostics, we have Christians, they have Buddhists. And so for me to feel more comfortable in my recovery, I love to go to church and I'm in devotion and discipleships and um, I really love to take his teachings and put it into my recovery. And so that's what Sundays are about. So you can stay for this video and just be like curious. It's like, hmm, I wonder what she's going to talk about. Um, so, um, like I said, I'm at my dad's art building. I was here last week. Um, and here's just a little video of what I'm looking at right now. So, uh, yeah, this is like a man's man <laughs> place, uh, but I love it. It's very creative, and so I'm hoping to get some inspiration from my dad. My dad's a folk artist. He paints. Um, people ask me, like a lot of my family's talented. My brother's really big. He's like a green thumb, and um, other family members are real creative, and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm just a real big supporter. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I sing in my church choir. I sing a solo today. Uh, I just give praise. That's what I do. It just helps me feel better. And today I sang Let Your Glory Fall by Carrie Job. And I mean, y'all, I started getting nervous as soon as I stepped on stage because I'll sing with the choir like normal. And then as I got closer, you know, my hands get sweaty and I get nervous. But when I start singing the song, the nerves kind of dissipate. And then like I know afterwards the adrenaline's super high. But, you know, I try to smile the whole time I'm singing. <laughs> you know, I, I tell people all the time, if you're going to do something wrong, do it in enthusiasm and a smile, and folks won't care. So that is, like, great lessons. You can steal that. Use it as much as you would like um, professionally and, um, you know, personally. Uh, today, uh, we were we have a series going on uh, talking about God is able, and today's is a little bit about He is more than able, and we're talking from um, Ephesians 3.20, and what it says there is, I'll get my Bible out here, and it says, Now to Him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And um, Ephesians was written by Paul. Paul was originally Saul. And um, if I'm remembering this right, I'm going to put in the um, description on where to find the story of Paul before he, when he was Saul. So um, Saul went around and he was persecuting Christians. I believe, and you know, he's doing all this stuff. He thought he was doing right because he was going by the Old Testament, the old ways of the Jews, and you know, they were persecuting Christian Christians. And um, Paul was on his way to Damascus, and Jesus came to him, and um, they talked and blinded him. He ended up going to Damascus. Um, God had sent someone to Paul and ended up curing Paul of his blindness, but then Paul became an apostle to God, you know, to Jesus. And he was, um, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, uh, the people that weren't Jews. And so he has lots of writings, a lot of stuff by Paul in here. He wrote lots of letters and, you know, he wrote Romans uh, while he was in prison and they all call that the Christian constitution. Um, but I'm not going to get too much into that, but I will link where, or I'll have you where you can find the story of Paul because it's amazing. It just shows that God can use anybody. He has a plan for everybody. And um, that's what it kind of talks about here because it talks about God and the church. And um, he gives us these. And look at y'all. 
I'm like all about it. I'm learning. I'm absorbing because I love the program. I love the program of AA, but it's spiritual and we talk about a higher power. But for me, it's God of the Bible. And so I just, I, I want to delve into it because it's his word and it helps me learn. And I always try to bring it back to, um, I always try to bring it back to my recovery. And so um, it talks about uh, how Paul mentions the wonders of God. And God has done wonderful things that, you know, he got the, he got the Jews out of Egypt. He sent them, you know, across the Red Sea. He had done so many things. I mean, look at the walls of Jericho. You know, he had people march around. He was just, I mean, most people are like, are you serious? But, you know, God has us do these things to prove our trust in him. Uh, look at, you know, um, David, David of David and Goliath. You know, he loved God so much and trusted God that he fought a giant because that giant was talking smack about God. And David's like, I ain't having that. None of y'all are doing anything. I'm going to do something. And he did. And that's how God works in people. You know, the Jews prayed for freedom for 400 years. And God's like, not yet. Not until Moses came around. I mean, it's just, you wonder, you know, and like in life now, um, you pray for things. A lot of us still kind of do 911 prayers. Every once in a while I do. I try not to. I but, you know, I think all the time I pray for things and it's like, I know it's supposed to come in my time, but I get so mad. But anyways, um, you know, he talks about the wonders of God, God and creation. You know, it talks about how God spoke the word. He created the world. If that's what you believe, that's what I believe. And, um, you know, God in conversion, um, when he met the risen Lord on the road, like when when Saul turned to Paul, that was Paul's conversion at that time. And then God in Christians, you know, uh, God works in us in all these different ways. You'll hear stories throughout, like how, you know, different Christians or different people has helped the folks that God has picked to do his work. And, um, you know, Paul mentions the willingness of God, you know, God, he's been patient for a lot of people. And, um, you know, He's all powerful, his ability to do the things, and then, you know, his availability. As long as you want him, he's there for you. And you just, and people don't understand that. And, you know, and then sometimes I get impatient. I get exhausted about it, you know, because my life's not the way I want it. And as Christians, you know, we always talk about how there's the vine and the branch. And, you know, we get pruned. We get pruned. <laughs> We, we are pruned. A lot of times, you know, the, the branches have to be pruned back for the vine to be strong. And, you know, I feel like I'm being pruned all the time, which is what I'm going through right now. And, you know, Paul mentions the ways of God, God's purpose, and it's, it's his salvation for all of us. You know, kind of like in step three, when, you know, one, we know we have a problem. Two, we find out there's something that can make it better. Three is turning our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand him. And that's what I did you know, years ago, but I didn't understand it till I got to AA. And I just needed something a little extra to help me understand. And, um, you know, when we are saved, um, it's like the Holy Spirit's put in us and we live through that. You know, he lives in us. It's like a big old long drawn out thing, but I'm not going to talk too much about it. But sometimes the Holy Spirit works in me. Like last week, you know, I've been going through a whole lot. Personally, I went through a really bad breakup. I've had just things not go my way and like the Holy Spirit ran through me and told me to go to the altar and just lay it down. And that's what the Holy Spirit was telling me to do. He's like, get this stuff out of you. I don't want this. I don't want this bad feelings. You know, I'm trying to comfort you, but you need to give it to my father. So that's what I did. <laughs> and then, you know, God's power, you know, it's, it's just crazy. All of it, you know, when you say it, it sounds crazy, but it's, it's not. And, and this is, what I've needed in my recovery, you know, God's infinite power, infinite love. He does the things that I need to feel better. And, you know, and he's doing that through the word, through this word that I'm getting every Sunday, through this word that I'm studying through the week in my discipleship, we're going to be studying the New Testament. Look at all these things, you know, like in our Bible study, we're learning love languages, like how women love and how men love. These are the things that God is putting in my path, and I'm so excited about it, and it just makes me feel better. And, um, you know, not everybody thinks like I do. If you've stayed this long, I'm so happy for you. You know, um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can comment down below. I will get back to you ASAP. Um, you know, 
I just, I love my higher power who is God. He's cleared things out for me. And, you know, he's been patient with me because, oh, my life is full of things like of what not to do. And that's kind of what I tell people, you know, I strayed for a long time and things were so much easier when I had God in my life. I looked back, I looked back when I was doing like my fourth and fifth step and, uh, and I was like, man, I remember how much peace I felt when I'd gotten saved. I used to have Y'all, I used to have night terrors at six years, at young ages. I was scared of everything. I was so scared of all this stuff. And most people was like, well, it's normal to be scared. But at six years old, the things I was scared of, I was scared of a tornado hit. I was crying. And I just remember it. And I didn't sleep alone until I was almost 10 years old. And you know why? It's because that's when I got saved and baptized. And I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I had that. And I chose to let it go to like live out in the world, to go out and dream, to, you know, party, do drugs, to have that instant gratification to feel better. And I'm just, I look back and I tell a couple of people at my church, it's like, why didn't I just stay good? Why didn't I just stay in what was working? And that's because God was like, this isn't going to be your story. You're going to be there for people. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of young people in churches nowadays and they get caught up in this real world and hopefully they can come to me. And I can help them with that. So that's kind of my story today. I get to kind of rambling on Sundays because it's just something I'm really passionate about. Like I take this, you know, God didn't have me stay. I, God doesn't like sin, so I don't know why I say it like that. But I chose not to have God in my life at that time. I chose to do the things I wanted to do. And I made it the excuse that I didn't want to have party on Saturday night and then go in on Sunday and worship. And that was the devil talking to me. Y'all may not believe in that either, but that's something that I believe in. And God just took a step back because he's like, I don't want you in this lifestyle. I'm not going to be a part of it. But when you're ready for me, I will be there. And, you know, I decided when I came to AA, I got that gift of desperation finally. And I eventually learned how to give things over to God. And it took three years. Okay. And when I finally got it, I'm like, yes. I mean, why <laughs> did I not do this? So, you know, I'm hoping this helps someone today. You know, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. Um, he doesn't like sin. So, you know, if you're just getting into some shenanigans, he's going to step aside and be like, I'll be here for when you're ready. And, um, you know, I'm glad I finally decided that I was ready. And so, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, comment below. Um, please like this video. You stuck around this long. You might as well like it. Um, if you came across this and you're like, okay, this is kind of cool, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more videos coming. I'm pretty busy. I have a full-time job, and I'm trying to fit these in, and I'm learning everything I can about, you know, splicing videos, doing all this stuff. So this is a growing and learning experience for me. But thank you for coming to my special edition. Hope you enjoyed it. God bless you. I love you. And, you know, see you later. Loves.